I'm back and I'm better than ever. Got a net? No, no. You know what? Everybody kind of uses that one. I gotta, th I gotta think of some original real quick. Okay, okay. I got, I got it. How about this? I'm going to inject a lethal dose of poison in the DNA of the eye. Okay, no, we're done with that bit. Hey, everyone, it's me. Long time no see. You missed? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but today is Tuesday, May 23rd, and I do know that it's time for our wrestling news of the week. Day. Weekday. Yeah, that's what I said. Weekday. Alright, so AEW Fight Forever has an announced date, finally. So, you know, there's been rumor and speculation that it's been in development hell for a bit, um, and that certain things had to be cut back so it could have its ESRB rating and what have you. Um, it was finally announced, though, by THQ Nordic. Didn't realize that they were uh, making this, by the way, even though I think it was announced. I digress. It was announced by them on their site that the release date will be Thursday, June 29th. Now, Thursday's a weird date if you keep up with the gaming world, like I do. Uh, because you know it's usually like either like a Friday or a Sunday or a, it's maybe a Saturday, ever, probably a Saturday. So that way you can kind of get that revenue based upon the weekend. And you know, June's a weird date too, because it's usually like a November, October, maybe even December. So that way you get that holiday, like sales. I don't know what the technical term is, but you get what I'm trying to say. You get, like, a holiday sale off of it. Um, the reason why they want it this soon, I guess, I mean, June makes sense because they've been <laughs> they've been pushing this for quite some time. But uh, according to sources that somebody over at WrestleZone has spoken to, the plan is for the June 28th episode of AEW Dynamite to have heavy synergy. Sorry, I had to think about the terminology for synergy anyway. Um, it has heavy synergy with the game in hopes of driving a bunch of people to get last-minute pre-orders in. The thought is that a lot of these pre-orders will be digital, so they'll play it immediately at midnight when the game launches, just two av hours after the show ends on the East Coast. Hey, what's up, East Coast? <laughs> yeah, so this game is being made by, uh, the same people who have brought you Saints Row... I think the third, all the way up until the third, maybe the fourth one, but I'm not sure. Um, all the old SmackDown versus Raw. Yeah, I'm not going to mansplain. You know who THQ is, but uh, this is the aftermath of their bankruptcy. <laughs> What's left of them? You can definitely trust them with business plans. THQ Nordic and All Elite Wrestling reportedly have a lot of marketing ready to roll over the next several weeks. It's been reported that the game will still be bloody, too. Um, you know what? I'm I'm level with you. YouTube's kind of weird about like blood on here. Like, is it okay for games? Considering it's not a real human, but like b blood's not okay. I don't even know if that word's okay, but I'm I don't care. So yeah, I'm not gonna show it, but it could or could not have like a tweet possibly mentioned in like the the description below. Who knows? I mean, if you want to check it out, take that gamble. You can maybe figure it out if it does or does not exist. Um, speaking of, uh, theoretical links in description, uh, factual links in the description of anything that I mention here will be posted below, or if I'm like, hey, this Twitter account says blah blah blah. So, oh wait, <laughs> I forgot to say the topic. Raquel Rodriguez's partner has been revealed. So, yeah, I'll give you the TLDR. Liv Morgan got injured, maybe... Mm, let's say like a week or two ago yeah they were the women's tag team champions her and rodriguez and they uh when when she got injured they had to relinquish the titles so yeah anyway raquel had a one-on-one -on -one match against sonia with chelsea as sonia's manager and raquel won just a heads up this is one of many spoilers for raw both if you want to tune into raw and if i theoretically do a review this week which if i don't knock on wood i should have a review up next week so if you want to subscribe and maybe stick around for that and you know daily wrestling news i used air quotes there but you know no visuals anyway i'd appreciate you all right so yeah after the match chelsea ran in and her and sonia beat down raquel until shotzi's music hits and like shotzi ran down to the ring 
her and Raquel cleared out the ring, and Shotzi tells Raquel to hold down the middle rope. So she does with, like, you know, like she uses... I don't know how to describe it without sounding stupid and weird, but she uses, like, her legs and her arms to pull up the... Her arms to pull up the top rope, legs to hold down the rope, and then Shotzi does a... Uh, dive through the her legs slash the middle rope area. So then afterwards, they embrace in the team with like awkward like Raquel goes for a high five, but Shotzi goes for a hug, I think, or maybe vice versa. But yeah, okay, they gotta they gotta figure out their chemistry. That's how tag teams work. It's okay. So yeah, I guess they're a team until further notice. And I guess Raquel's team with Liv Morgan is either non-existent or like this is gonna be like a turn for Raquel or Liv or. Shotzi later on down the road and sets up a story with them or WWE will just forget about it. It's one of three options. So speaking of Liv Morgan's injury and of apparently my computer's injury, I don't know if you heard that or not, the fan just like went super loud. Anyway, so Liv Morgan has a shoulder injury. Um, as kind of hinted at earlier, she got injured in a match against Dakota Sky. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It just dawned on me. So yeah, as I hinted at earlier... Liv Morgan got a shoulder injury um, in a match with Dakota Kai and EEO Sky, I believe. Uh, if it's not, it was with Bailey then uh, for uh, damage control versus tag team champions. Uh, Liv Morgan suffered shoulder injury, and now Dave Meltzer has confirmed Dakota Kai's injury was a torn ACL. Um, that really sucks, though, because, like, you know, Liv Morgan's always that wrestler that I think has so much potential just like a fan you know i'm i'm not a wrestler i don't know shit for chat so to speak um you've heard of tip for tat now here's shit for chat um but yeah i don't know anything about the business but for what limited knowledge i think i know about the business she always seems like she has so much potential and she seems like she's somebody who like gives her 100 and gives her all in everything that she does so it kind of kind of sucks that like every time she gets some momentum something happens like when she was what was it the women's champion yeah the smackdown's women's champion it's like the crowd turned on her immediately because of how they booked her and how they kind of wrote her character and then she kind of had like a character developing slash starting to develop and then she got into the tag team titles and then this injury kind of held her back it just sucks um yeah uh Dakota Kai recently, this could go with all the damage control really, has had the same like start stop story and it sucks because everything up till this point was booking's fault. <laughs> Just call an ace an ace. And uh, yeah, I hope both of them get better soon, you know? I hope they have a speedy recovery but don't rush it, you know? So yeah, speaking of those women's tag team titles, there is going to be a, I don't know if they have a fancy name for it or not, but it's going to be a women's tag team fatal four way, that's my term, on the Raw after Night of Champions between Bailey and Eo Sky against Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville against Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler against Raquel and Shotzi. So, I think, if I'm going to throw my prediction out real quick... Sorry, that was so weird. <laughs> if I, I'm going to throw out my prediction, though, real quick. Uh, who I think's going to win is Raquel and Shotzi, because I feel like they're just going to continue that story. Who I want to win is... Actually, you know what? No, I changed my opinion. They're probably going to have Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler win it, because it looks like they were setting up... Rhonda and Shayna to pull the titles off of Raquel and Liv anyway, so who knows? Maybe they'll have Raquel and Liv be, like, the chasers. Or, sorry, Raquel and Shotzi now be, like, the chasers for the titles. There's a story there. And then Bailey and Eosky, they're not gonna win, unfortunately, because they have a story going on right now with damage control. And then there's Chelsea and Sonya Deville. They're not... The way that their characters are made, they're not supposed to be convincing, like... Ooh, maybe they could win this. You know, you know, like actual challengers. Speaking of, like we kind of spoke about two segments ago, Dave Meltzer again on the Wrestling Observer. Uh, when I almost called her Sasha Banks. When Mercedes Monet uh, got injured in her match, she called an audible. Apparently, uh, she was supposed to win, but you know, being injured, she said, "Nope, it's your night to go over." 
and there's no confirmation on the injury minus it could be a foot or an ankle injury. So just to give you a heads up, some of these uh, news head titles can be summarized just by the title. So I'm just going to, for those, I'm just going to give you the title and go on, you know? Like this one, for example. Next Monday, they're having qualifying matches for the Money in the Bank. Or, sorry, excuse me. Next Monday, the qualifying matches for the participants in the Money in the Bank match begins. I'm going to try my best to, like I've already plugged, <laughs> I'm going to try my best to do uh, start reviews again next week. So hopefully, hopefully, that review of that Money in the Bank shall be uploaded. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not going to rush anything one way or another or make promises. All right, I've tried my best to kind of like pad this out. So here's another lengthy story. Ready? So Nick Khan says Raw doesn't have to be on Mondays. SmackDown could add a third hour. On May 22nd, Nick Khan was a guest at the J.P. Morgan Global Technology, Media, and Communications Conference, and he spoke for like the 80 billionth time about WWE's upcoming media rights deals and uh, hinted at a little other things. So last week, he mentioned that SmackDown could move off of Friday nights if it needed to happen to fit a partner's broadcast slash streaming schedule. Um... He talked about how they could be flexible with both of its brands, apparently. This kind of threw me for a loop. They indicated that WWE... Sorry, he indicated that WWE could be moved to a different day of the week for either one of the shows if needed to be. And that Raw's third hour is staying, or uh, as he worded it, quote, don't anticipate, end quote, that it's going away. Um, Khan also mentioned that WWE is considering options for holding viewers in the 10 p.m. block discussions, which again could possibly include making that final hour more, quote, adult, end quote. Now keep in mind, even if they do turn it to, like, an adult hour, I, the only thing more adultish about it I think that they're going to do is just add more cussing and maybe, bl like, blading will be okay again. Which hey, that's enough for me. I don't I don't need anything crazy. <laughs> Heck, we can kind of keep the blading out of it, except for the like really big stories. Like you can just push that aside and keep that a thing of the past. Thank you. <laughs> he also said that WWE is considering adding a third hour to SmackDown. Which dear God, no, please don't. And regarding the next round of deals, here, I'm just going to quote this article verbatim. Usually I try to put it in my own words, but here we go. Quote, Regarding the next round of deals, which could precipitate changes like those, Khan confirmed that Fox's exclusive negotiating window for SmackDown has expired. NBC Universal is still the only party they're talking to about Raw, but that window should close soon, too. Both exclusivity periods started last month around the weekend of WrestleMania 39. So, that'll be interesting. Who knows, maybe they're waiting or trying to play it out to where the exclusive bidding rights ends for Universal NBC as well. So that way Raw and SmackDown are open to, like, go to, I don't know, like, Disney Plus or, like, I don't know, the Fight Network or something like that, you know. So other comments or just, like, interesting notes from uh, Mr. Khan's speech is that he sees growth potential for NXT beyond being a developmental brand and maybe see it as something more like a third th show compared to Raw and SmackDown. Apparently, maybe additional shows could be added to WWE's weekly scheduling in the future. Quote, once, uh, implied media rights, gets situated, we'll look at other nights of the week to develop new content as well. End quote. Some of that content could be non-PG. I'm just going to quote this one again verbatim. I'm not good with legal talk, and I, it might just fly over my head because that's out of my department. So here you go. The company is currently in talks with multiple international cities for 2024 PLEs, and their goal is to have every such event subsidized by local entities like Cardiff Wells did for Clash at the Castle and Puerto Rico did for Backlash. He expects WWE's roster of female talent to grow and said, quote, we pay our women as well as we do our men, end quote. <sighs> I'm not going to post it, but, like, you remember that thing that AJ Lee tweeted out right before she left? Uh, it's a good time to always remember that when they say that. Anyway, <laughs> former Ring of Honor star Beer City Bruiser, real name Matt Winchester, that's a freaking pimping real name, by the way, is said to have surgery in June. 
He announced on his Facebook page that he will be having total hip replacement surgery on June 29th, and he stated that he's open to working in wrestling and horror, in addition to doing conventions and seminars while he's recovering. So that's awesome. The biggest news article of them all is about to come up. Ready? So Gene motherfucking Snitsky is to make his MLW singles debut at the January, February, March, April, May, June, July 8th MLW Fusion tapings. And it, hopefully, if I edit it, here's a tweet on the screen. If not, uh, just, like, you know, you could look it up or whatever. But he's back, and it wasn't his fault. You know, this is a good week for wrestling, because Tito Santana is announced as a special guest referee at the same time that Gene Snitsky's going to show up. Well, not the same time, because there's an event uh, in four days uh, at ISPW. Um... Yeah, that's 527, by the way. As Bull James defends his ISPW Heavyweight Championship against Rick Recon? Recon? R-E-C-O-N? I don't know. Uh, but I figured I'd throw some indie news in here, too, while also talking about, like, the big two companies. Hey, did you know that Devon Dudley was speaking recently on Insight with Chris Van Vliet, an excellent channel to check out, by the way. I don't like to plug channels usually, but he's so positive and so great at what he does. But anyway, on that episode of Insight, Devon said he's feeling great, but is taking things slow after undergoing back surgery. As such, he also gave his thoughts on the possible return for the Dudley boys. Quote, I spoke to Bubba about, uh, implied, a possible return. Again, I just told him, like I started to say earlier about Kiss being in the greatest hits. You have to watch that episode to understand that. Uh, All we gotta do is the greatest hits, he said. Yeah, you know, minus the what's up. We'd have to remodify that, but the 3D, the belly to back, neck breaker, even somewhat LOD coming off the top rope when we clothesline him, because, again, a lot of times I land on my stomach flat first. But there was other times I went leg first, then a roll. I like to call it the Hacksaw Jim Duggan Nikolai Volkov bump. <laughs> you go to your feet, your knees, your hips, and then even to your back. Or the cane bump. I can do stuff like that. I'm not opposed to it. So here's my question, right? I'm just mapping it out in my head as I'm speaking. So the was up, he's got to go to the top. And if he's going to fall on the guy, his knees and his, like, his hands and knees are going to catch most of it. Oh, but then it's going to, like, jar his back. Okay, I get what you're saying. Speaking as a fellow uh, back surgery person, <laughs> that's legal terminology, by the way, I understand. House of Glory enters exclusive agreement with Premier Streaming Network. Um, yeah, Matt Cardona announced that... On the con- in the conclusion of House of Glory's Beware the Fury pay-per-view. Oh, by the way, he is, spoiler, in 3, 2, 1, the newly crowned HOG world champion, the Hog. <laughs> um, but yeah, he announced that the company will be heading to Premier Streaming Network starting with Plata O Promo on June 16th. So good on them, good on them. All right, so I'm not going to lie, this one... I'm almost 95% sure I'm going to make as, like, the teaser in the title. But there is a superstar returning, and here it is. We're going to end on a positive note, because Cassie Lee of the Iconics, well, formerly of the Iconics, last heard uh, the Inspirations, is now returning to pro wrestling. She's going to have a comeback. I guess I'm going to call it a tour, even though it's not officially a tour, but she's going to have a comeback time period uh, in Australia on... World Series Wrestling's Full Throttle Tour of Melbourne, Adeline, A-D-E-L-A-I-D, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, and Sydney from October 6th to the 13th. So I'm I'm flipping excited for her. Oh, by the way, they posted like a little uh, hype video package for us, how they announced it. But I'm so happy. I, I miss both of the Iconics because they, they were just positivity outside of the wrestling universe so you know just to know that they're they're doing okay it's a good thing yeah i'm a simp that's right for the whole entire wrestling universe all i want to do is like everybody just be successful and be happy at what you're doing all right thanks for watching everybody this is just the part where i spill like where i've been and you know the normal routine um 
So if you, if you like what you saw, just give it a little subscribe. It pr helps the channel out, helps me out, uh, lets me know like I should continue doing this. Anyway, um, comment down below if you want to. Love to just chat, chit, chat, 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 chit, chat about wrestling or my millions of screw ups and stutters because I'm going to keep that one in. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, long story short, I'm back now, hopefully. This is, like, not the video I pop up every six months and say, Hey, I'm back. We're going to go on a normal schedule. Because those are funny, but it gets repetitive after a while. Yeah, hopefully I should be back tomorrow for wrestling news. Maybe a Raw review for this week, but no promises on a Raw or a SmackDown review for this week. Um, if I think I got my finances correct, next week should be the week for wrestling reviews. But I digress. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated. Stay safe, everybody. And thanks for watching. Until tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know how to end these things. Bye.